Welcome to the Low Carb MD Podcast. No one is beyond help. No one is beyond hope. As we have always said, we are bringing you medical information and cutting edge science, but none of this is medical advice. Please seek out input from your own doctor. Hello and welcome back to the Low Carb MD Podcast. Tro, today we're going to the source. We finally got her on. It took us a long time, didn't it? It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, oh my God, this is going to be awesome. Uh, you know, the, you know, it's funny. Um, you know, uh, there's the bottom line is I've wanted to hear this story. I've heard Doug Reynolds' story, but he's only the he's the worst half of Low Carb USA. Right now, today, we have the best half of Low Carb USA. And you know, it's funny, I, we've worked together on so many things, Pam, and at, it's at this point, it's like, I want your story, I want the whole story from your side, right? And I wanna hear it from your side, and I'm so excited to have you here. And we can all gossip about, you know, uh, we can all gossip about that while, while, while he's on here, you know? So <laughs> this is gonna be fun, and, and I hope you guys, the listeners, enjoy this. And it's nice to hear, you know, people who have made such a huge influence on this community, and, and, and you don't know much about them. So, so the beauty of this, I'm hoping, is that we, we learn a little bit more about you, learn about, you know, your relationship maybe with Doug, and then how, how it progressed, how Low Carb USA progressed, how SMHP progressed from your standpoint. All right, so that's a lot. So let's start. I know it's so funny for me. I used to really like being just behind the scenes and um, I like being there and not out in the, in the front. And when we started any, uh, the conference, it was all about the researchers and the clinicians doing the work with the patients and the outcomes and wasn't about me and it isn't about me. So <laughs> thank you for everybody who's joining who wants to listen to my story. <laughs> Where should I start, Tro, Brian? I mean, start at the beginning. So um, Brian, I think, probably knows you a little bit better than I do, but, you know, um, start at the beginning. So, you know, you're just, mo how do you get, because this is a little bit of a rabbit hole for most people, right? Uh, how, you know, who are you before the rabbit hole? And I, I know a little bit about that. And then, you know, when did you get first, like, who exposed you? Who, how did you get started? And, and you know, so, so walk us through that part. Okay, so, well, I have a medical background. Um, I worked for 20 years in radiology as in di diagnostic imaging. So not in clinical care until the last couple of years where I did some medical assisting. Um, most of it was in the hospital. So I was in diagnostic imaging and patient care. Um, and then, unfortunately, I had a weird back injury moving a critical patient from the ICU. I was doing CT scans at the time. Um, I know the respiratory therapy group was a little bit concerned about the breathing tube, the ET tube, and we needed to rush back and someone left a chair out in the hallway from their computer station. And um, I just kind of moved it with my leg while we're pulling everything, the poles and the bed and the, all the whole team was there and trying to get into the room. And um, so there was a couple of years where I wasn't super comfortable working in the hospital setting. And then I went into outpatient setting, which is in orthopedics. And then I got into a little bit more of the um, patient care setting, did a lot more medical assisting there, removing sutures and helping with casts and post-op and pre-op and all that stuff, which was fun. Um, so I often think I have a pretty good understanding of chronic pain when people talk about chronic illness and not getting really good care. I know doctors, we talk about this a lot, are really good at acute care. And, um, but the chronic pain and the chronic illness is coming around, but it's still kind of stuck in uh, people not really knowing what to do about it. So like my back injury was never really diagnosed well. So I had back pain for many, many, many years. They didn't address the root cause. And it led to foot pain and I didn't address the real, they couldn't figure out what the root cause was for that. So um, I ended up having to get out of the medical um, field. And um, interestingly enough, Doug and I have worked together for many, many, many years, even before uh, we started Low Carb USA. 
but I felt like we were always trying to sort of eat healthy. Um, Doug was, uh, has been on here a few times, so many people may know his story already, being a um, long distance runner and um, an engineer at the time. So we, very shortly after we were working together in engineering, they brought me in to do some testing, QA testing for their software engineering platform. And um, we started doing health and wellness stuff, um, volunteering at our local running club, many, many hours and getting to know hundreds of people and, who were training for marathons in our community, really fun. Um, and uh, many, a few years later, I had a friend of ours that was saying, I remember when you guys used to pedal that pink sugar water, we were literally bringing carb, carb-based electrolyte drinks out um, thinking, you know, we were helping runners um, fuel for the race. And we were talking about nutrition and, but it was all, you know, healthy whole grains and um, n- not enough talk about protein, I <laughs> think. Um, it was all about carb loading back then. It was all about carb you loading. You needed the energy to, to run. To run. And I remember saying to someone, and I think they may have been going a low carb, low sugar way at the time, because she says, where's the water? And do you have anything that doesn't have sugar in it? And I said, but you need the carbs to build your muscles and to recover and to run. And she looked at me like I was insane. And I was like, what was wrong with her? <laughs> oh, no, we're those people. And so then what happened? You started gaining weight, started not feeling great. Your back's bad. So you got yeah. chronic pain and you're, you know, what, what did you transition? So you went out of medicine and what did you transition to? So Doug was working in engineering. Um, oh, that, that's right. You said the software. Quality. Software engineering. So yeah. when he, him and I first moved in together, um, he was working for a software engineering firm um, doing satellite TV um, set top box. And it was right around the time, gosh, this is like feeling like it's dating me, um, when internet TV wasn't on um, internet TV and the um, monitors that play internet and video and stuff, they weren't a thing yet. So we were actually in the development process with teams at Apple TV and Google TV. And we literally had like a a composite um, monitor and was like, you can play video and watch the internet on a TV screen. So composite, um, for all that, guys, just if you remember or you don't even know, there may be some listeners that you know, <laughs> that little needle with the little wire that you have to spin around. That's what you're talking about, right? The little, so, no. well, it was. So, oh, composite was the yellow. Was that the yellow, red, and, and white? Was that the one you were talking about? Or is that uh, uh, I don't remember. There was an Apple TV box. There was a screen that we were hooked up to all of the devices. And what we were actually really doing was um, Adobe Flash Player had to certify um, every company device that make sure that it played video the way it was supposed to. And it had to be. So you remember the Flash Player updates that you always had to have? Oh, the most annoying things ever. I the most yeah. annoying things ever. Time. Well, we yeah. had to actually certify people to actually before they came on the market and test it that Adobe was OK with how it played video. So I can't tell you how many times I listened to these like test things um, on devices um, to to certify them, basically. Anyway, um, so certified videos. You're working with Doug, and and yeah. you guys are just trying to, you know, you're drinking your pink water. You know, when and we're you're trying to be active. Running, and we're, right? we're trying to be active. We're trying to stay healthy. We're, yeah. I'm trying to learn to run from a very beginning stage of having pain. And I'm watching people run like 20 miles in their training run. And they're like, how's your run go? I'm like, it went great. It went like around the block and it was really good. And I didn't have a lot of pain, <laughs> but we were trying to eat healthy. Um, Doug didn't necessarily always, I was like, what do you want to eat? He's like, let's get pizza. I'm like, not again. Cause I was already starting to put on the weight um, slowly. You know what? Well, you know, a few pounds then. I never put on a lot. I was never massive. And I was, you know, I didn't have like a massive in the amount of extra weight, but it was enough that I was really getting really concerned about it and knowing that it's really hard to take off again once you put it on, right? Everybody, we all have come to know that. And you know, I was 20 getting, I got up to over the next few years, we changed companies and we did some other things, maybe 25, 30 pounds heavier than I had been. 
and I was working a desk job. I wasn't active and I thought I was trying to eat healthy. I was trying to say, Doug, let's not eat the pizza. Let's not eat the burgers and chips and Coke because that would be his other standard go-to lunch. I was like, let's get some fresh meat and vegetables. I was trying to add more vegetables to my diet and more fruit, which I didn't realize wasn't helping me. Um, And so I was getting really confused about food. I was really, I was really starting to get into my head about why, if I'm trying to be really mindful and I'm more active than many of the people that I know that I work with, we were started into a startup um, a couple of years after we were doing this engineering stuff. And it was a, um, it was a little bit of tech and a little bit of insurance, financial planning stuff. And a lot of the people that we worked with wanted to have pizza for the lunch meetings and sandwiches. And I was like, no, let's, you know, really let's try to get something like, can we get salads? Can we get salads with, you know, a side of protein, you know, tied to chicken or whatever. And I'd go out and walk at lunch. And um, something that Doug and I had started to do was martial arts together. I don't know, Tro, you're uh, doing, you've done jujitsu for a while or? Jujitsu, karate, all of it. But since my back, it's been like three years. I haven't been able to do, uh, I haven't been able to do kicks, but I love it. I love it. My kids do it. Uh, they, they love it. So yeah, it's a, pa- a huge passion of mine. So maybe I'll have to send you some information because I found things over the years about back pain that's helped me a lot. I still have to be real careful, but I have things that can address it. And I know oh, I love kickboxing. Oh, please. So, so I, I mean, I've gone through Sarno. I'm a huge Sarno fan. I've gone through uh, Stuart McGill. I'm a huge Stuart McGill fan. Uh, it's, uh, you know, so I, you know, I'm maybe we'll, we'll have a whole nother topic on back pain. I think one day. Yeah, well, definitely. So we were real active. We were um, punching and kicking and um, doing some groundwork, which was never my favorite, by the way. I loved kicking. I have pictures of Doug um, training me on round kick outside in the park, and I could kick a pretty high, pretty good round kick. I loved kicking. I loved, we did a, a Muay Thai, and I accidentally gave Doug a black, a black eye and a bloody nose a couple of other times, and we won't like, talk about it. I was freaking out. Like, I'm so sorry, Doug. He says, my fault. I didn't have my hands up. <laughs> but um, so we're really active and we're still putting on weight. We're working in a really stressful job. And um, so I just want to repeat that for the podcast that Pam has beat up Doug several times. Yeah. And she admits to it. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Black guy yeah. once, bloody nose another time. Yeah. He got me a couple of times good. I was like, oh, that pad where you just kicked did not help. <laughs> You know what? I don't want you to meet, talk to Rosette too much actually now after hearing this. So <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You know, you should yeah, I used to play racquetball with, with my wife and I had a lot of marks on the mat, my back from that ball hitting me. And I'm like, I'm still not sure whether it was intentional or not. When you're sweaty and that ball hits you right in the middle, that, that stings. Oh, oh man. So I'm like, I'm retired from this. Yeah. So, repetitive stuff. So you're being acting, you're doing martial arts, you're conquering your, co- your, you know, your chronic pain. You're drinking the pink juice. What happens? What happens next? So um, over the years when we were talking about carb loading drinks and we actually did have there was a sugar free energy drink that was part of our uh, supplement range that we were promoting at the time. We used to do health and wellness uh, expos at corporations at lunchtime expos. We were like contracting with a a firm that did um, uh, expos for people, corporations during their lunch. So we went to like Sony locally here. We went to Qualcomm and we were out set up with a bunch of other people at the uh, lunchtime expos to tell people about healthy living and, you know, eat all your fruits and vegetables and low fat. And here's some vitamins and some drinks and, you know, to add to your lifestyle. And one of the people that we worked with over the years doing that sent us an email at one time and I had seen some stuff online where he was putting butter in his coffee and I thought that's insane like who that's gross who would ever put butter in their coffee does anybody else like ever like when they first heard that thought what (laughs) that's crazy um nobody's popped into the live question to say yes but I I think they're probably the same um and but 
at the same time, our friend sent us information on ketones and it has an alternative source of fuel than glucose. And it really piqued Doug's interest being um, a long distance runner. He's like, wait, carb loading. What are these other things that people are talking about? What, is, what are ketones? And um, they were actually exogenous ketones. It was the conversation. And so he went down the rabbit hole and he started looking and he found Jeff Folick and Steve Finney's work and started reading about the art and science of low carbohydrate for, uh, for performance. And he's like, wait a minute, they're not carb loading. <laughs> and I could switch my fuel um, source while I'm running and not have any uh, carbs or glucose or anything. So we started looking at that. A um, few other things came up with, um, there was a documentary that he started watching and this one was what actually really got my attention. I don't know if you guys have heard of the serial killers of the movie. It's yeah. C-E-R-E-A-L. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. It's great. Um, and so Doug had that on. I hadn't been like interested enough to go and say, I'm gonna read this article by Jeff Finney, Jeff Folick and Steve Finney. I was like, are you still reading like days on end? He was, I was, he was, I was saying, are you still reading about low carbohydrate diets? He's like, it's fascinating. Yes, I just found this article in this article but when he put that documentary on it really grabbed my attention the first one donald uh, o'neill was kind of talking about the same thing someone introduced him to low carb ketogenic diet and he was confused about adding fats and eating red meat and eating eggs again and not carb loading he wasn't um an elite athlete like they focused on in the second serial killers movie but uh, more of a you know weekend um, wanted to be active, lift weights, run, jog, um, swim, or, you know, do all those kind of things. So he kind of went to a market and was shopping for eggs and fresh foods and vegetables and talking about what he wasn't going to eat and what he was going to eat and then how he felt. And I was listening, thinking, wow, this is really interesting. Um, I know Doug's been talking about it, but he's putting it a little more context. And within a few days or a week, Doug Reynolds said, we're going, I have a list. We're going to pull the trigger on this. I have a list and we're going to go to the grocery store. And I was like, wait a second, you have a list and you want to go to the grocery store. <laughs> so, so I'm curious when this is like 2015, 15, right? So it's 2015 and you guys are, you know, watching it. So it's interesting that the documentary is what sets you off. You know, because you're kind of reading through the science and that's, that's powerful. Like storytelling mm -hmm. is powerful, you know, fat fiction that my, uh, you know, I heard they let Brian do that documentary and, then, <laughs> and Doug Reynolds, <laughs> you know, Doug, you know, and, uh, so many of these, you know, the, the bitter, um, not the bitter pill, the, um, magic pill, the magic, magic pill. pill. Yeah. The magic pill and, and, uh, fat, you know, Vinny Tortridge, you know, there's, there's been so much. And I think that's, I really, like we could write all the paper we, we want. We could we could talk all we want. And, and it's those documentaries who, when people see real stories and testimonies, that's what convinces them. Like what happened to you when I, I watched The Magic Pill and I was like, oh my gosh, if this Jason Fung guy is legit. This is pretty amazing. You know, when you start seeing the effects on someone's life and see them throw their pills away and see them feel healthier and happier, that has so much impact because you could read all about the Krebs cycle all day long, but it doesn't click with the average person. Yeah, exactly. So that's what sets you off. So you're like serial killers and 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 now he's like, I'm going shopping. And you're like, great, you go shopping. <laughs> you know? Well, he brought me with him and I was like, wait a second, we're going to the grocery store together. I used to have to beg and drag him. Please help help me, you know, carry the heavy stuff or my wife stuff. can't get me to Christmas tree shop. She can't get me to Target. I'm like, I don't <laughs> I haven't had a Christmas tree in 20 years. <laughs> I wouldn't dream of trying to get Doug to a Christmas tree block. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so that really resonated with me. And then I was still a little bit confused. Like, how was I going to cut grains out? How was I going to stop eating bananas and peanut butter and beans? Like, aren't those things supposed to be healthy? And it took me a while. It took me a while to wrap my brain around. We went to the grocery store and we were looking for full fat yogurt. Couldn't find it. It was like a wall of low fat yogurt with fruit in it. And then maybe on the very bottom of the aisle, there was a Greek yogurt um, that we finally found. So we bought that and we bought butter and 
cream. And I was like, wow, we're gonna eat all this fat. This is weird. <laughs> um, meat and bacon and you know, all the things that um, were on the list. But we didn't always under, totally completely understand everything and why and how to do it. So at one point, a few months in, we decided we'd start writing down a list and maybe create a coaching program. Mm -hmm. And the other thing was we had kind of decided, I think Brian tells the story, he didn't always tell people what he was doing right away, right? Um, certainly didn't tell your patients. And we weren't telling anybody. We used to talk to Doug's mom in South Africa every Sunday, his mom and dad. And one of the calls, he we he says, you know, we're doing this thing. We've changed it. Like, How are you doing? We say, he says, I'm doing this thing. And I'm, I'm um, we're eating like this and we're doing this. And we've cut out all the grains and the sugars. And his mom says, that sounds like a Tim Noakes diet. And Doug went, what? Wait a minute. <laughs> Tim Noakes is doing this. This is his mentor, his idol, his carb loading, you know, instructor. He um, being a long distance runner from South Africa. And Tim Noakes wrote the book, The Lore of Running. That was everybody's Bible that Doug knew when he was running and all about carb loading. So while we were talking to his mom, she was kind of amazed that we could actually look something up on the internet while we were talking to her. <laughs> he looks up Tim Noakes and low carb and finds banting which is what they call it in South Africa. And he couldn't believe it. Um, found some videos of him tearing out the pages in his book um, saying, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Um, and this is what I'm learning now that all this carb loading is leading people down the road to type two diabetes like it did me because he was already getting diagnosed with um, his blood sugars were rising. His A1C was getting higher. His, while he had watched his dad struggle with such a um, terrible side effects of the disease and he was horrified. So um, I love the story how he says he found uh, Eric Wesson's book, uh, The New Atkins for the New You, and uh, said, hmm, I'm going to make a transition here. That was his beginning of his journey. Yeah, and the funny part is he started to debunk the book to say it doesn't work, and he's tried doing it. He goes, oh, I'm losing weight, and I'm feeling better, and his run, it's, runs got better. Everything got better, and he was like, oh, my gosh, I hope these guys aren't right. And then he realized right. it was right, and then he went through all that stuff he went through, you know? Yes. I know. I think it's amazing. Eric Westman tells the same story. He somehow got invited or had an opportunity to meet with Dr. Atkins and said the same thing. This doesn't work. I don't understand what you're talking about. And he said, look, try it and tell me that it doesn't work. Try it. Go ahead. And Dr. Westman tried to prove it wrong and he couldn't. And Jackie Everstein, who worked for Dr. Atkins, tells the most amazing story as well. She went for a job interview. She was in the transition between her nursing. She went for a job interview with Dr. Atkins and she's like, I don't think I can do this job. It sounds like quackery. And he's like, he laughed and he said, come and work for me for a few weeks. If you don't like it, if you don't see any people improving, you can leave. And she said, okay, I'll try it. And she was there for like oh, 20 years that she worked with him or something. <laughs> Couldn't deny it. I think that's, that's crazy, right? How, how, and it's, it's interesting, like this kind of full circle, right? You know, uh, Doug is a Tim Noakes fan for running. Tim Noakes makes a transition because of Eric Westman. Then Doug, Doug you know, kind of get, you know, starts watching these documentaries and all these players that are seemingly over time have worked closer and closer together, you know, to kind of unify this, this, this movement and this mission. Uh, this is like the primordial ooze, right? And, and so now you guys are starting, I mean, what are, what are you feeling? What happened? Like, how does it look like? So it sounds like steak, eggs, butter, and bacon, you know? Um, but what, it, so what, what do you, you know, what happens to you? Yeah, thank you. So um, Doug, being a male, loses weight really fast. And I'm a little bit confused. He's seeing ketones. You know, we started with the ketone uh, urine sticks. I'm not seeing them real easily. They're like barely turning. I'm not seeing changes really quickly, but I'm feeling different. A little bit you know i'm not having those blood sugar roller coasters um we started bringing um cucumbers and dip and leftover meat to work for lunch and 
I started realizing how much sugar was in my Starbucks coffee and ordering the sugar-free um, sweetener with cream. I was probably overdoing the cream a little bit more than I should have. So um, I had to learn over time, like what actually started that weight loss for me? Because I was entering, I entered into menopause a few months before we started this. It's 2015. I'm 46. I'm into early menopause. So, um, and I'm, I had the Christmas before I'd asked my parents and my sister for Christmas, can you get me some stretchy pants? Because none of my dress pants fit. And I'm so uncomfortable. And I was getting really self-conscious. And it took a bit of time for me to get that weight to come off. Um, but I knew from what I had read that I was getting healthier on the inside. I was having less ups and downs with the sugar roller coaster. I was having less headaches in the afternoon because I needed to replenish my carbs. And um, so eventually, slowly, I was losing the weight and I was able to go back to the size pants. Um, and I had to play around with what did my energy feel like when I was doing these um, martial arts training. And I remember a few times thinking, I'm exhausted um, and not having the fuel. And I kind of had to really about do I not have the energy because I'm not having this fuel source of glucose um am I going to push through it how long is it going to take me till I get fat adapted because I had started hearing that term and I did I transitioned and the first time that I ever went through lunch with not with not eating lunch I remember looking at Doug saying I didn't eat lunch today I didn't eat breakfast or lunch because having blood sugar roller coasters was my biggest problem. Um, he always tells the story that I used to carry food around with me. I used to carry a bag of food to work. Um, I would have, cause I was having oatmeal, banana and a granola bar and, or one of the above or two or three of the above for breakfast. And at 10 o'clock I was starving and I was jittery and I was anxious. And I was like, I have to go get something at the deli. And I really wanted often Hard boiled eggs. I often didn't, I obviously didn't have fat or protein in my breakfast. I was eating oatmeal and low fat yogurt and banana. And my body was screaming, your blood sugar is tanked and you need protein and fat. So I was doing that before I switched over. When I switched over, I was like just having the coffee and cream because that's what people told me I should be able to do fast in the morning. Don't eat that so called most important meal of the day. And I was able to skip it with just the coffee. And then we were um, having a, a lunch with protein and some vegetables and I was doing pretty well. And then there was a few times, like I said, all, all, all of a sudden the first time when I said, Doug, I didn't eat lunch and I just went for a walk and it was really hot outside and I feel really good. I'm surprised I'm not dying. <laughs> but he said, that's the way it's supposed to be. And I was like, I believe it now. I feel really good. And so fast forward, Doug says, hey, I have an idea. Why don't we start doing conferences and bring people together? Tell people about that because that's a huge deal. And this is where you play a huge role in not saying you're nuts. We're not taking these kind of risks because that's a, I mean, it's ridiculous. The risk you took putting on these conferences have that reached out to a lot of us. So what was that like when Doug says, hey, I think I have an idea, Pam? So thanks, Brian, for that. I know it's been a long road and... I think every conference that we put on, I feel like it's a big risk because we're not going to cover the costs. And most of the time we don't. So we've taken huge credit every year to be able to do this, but we know how important it is. And when we, when he came across Tim Noakes um, online, he found videos of examples of, they had done a conference in South Africa and Tim Noakes had, um, had someone help him and they invited Steve Finney and Jeff Bullock and Eric Westman, people we've just mentioned and many others, Jason Fung. And then we also came across Low Carb Down Under. So I told um, Rod Taylor when we had a chance to meet him again in person this summer when he came to um, the Metabolic Health Symposium um, that he was inspiration to us. We were like, this is really interesting. Doug and I at that um, tech company with the financial planning, we, we actually did event planning. So I was, um, he was behind the scenes on the computer doing a lot of the um, uh, 
stuff behind the scenes on the computer, on the website and stuff. And I was customer service. And then we both did helped our CEO plan one big conference and many like one day, two day, 50 to hundred people seminars. So this wasn't a completely foreign idea to us. We didn't know anybody in the low carb space. We just met them online. We attended, um, we attended a conference that was actually for the, with the exogenous ketone people. Um, but what we saw there really sparked our interest because I just spoke to Mary Newport. Um, she talks about her husband having Alzheimer's and how MCT oils, first coconut oils and MCT oils and exogenous ketones helping his Alzheimer's and his mental cognition. She's coming to do a poster presentation in Boca, which is amazing because she was the very beginning of our journey. Dom D'Agostino and Jeff Folick were all speaking on. Jeff Folick speaks about performance. Dom D'Agostino talking about brain epilepsy reduction in um, rebreathers with um, Navy SEALs and his work with um, Department of Defense. Um, talking about TBI and helping um, ketogenic diet and exogenous ketones helping with TBI. Mary Newport talking about Alzheimer's. I was like, wait, there's a whole lot more to this that we're continuing to learn. And that really inspired us to think, you know, more people really need to know about this. And there are a lot of people who are doing the work out here that um, we should figure out a way that we could highlight and bring more attention to. And we started talking to people in our running club. Um, we knew that there were people who would come out every weekend, every Tuesday night that we met, were running with and carrying a lot of weight, even though they ran four times a week um, and weren't able to outrun or you know lose the weight at all. So we started talking to people in our running club. We thought that this could help. Didn't always trigger right away. Um, but they ended up, I know one of them in particular ended up doing with some help at, uh, I think through Scripps, um, Brian, there was a program that helped him go low carb, interestingly enough. Um, I don't think it was Sharp, I think it was Scripps. And he, um, the more that we realized that we wanted to do this, Doug started creating a coaching program and to kind of help people figure out how to miss the pitfalls, how to get the information um, more at the beginning of their journey than having to run across it or figure it out. And he applied to a program that was actually hiring coaches. It was through one of the things that Tim Noakes had done. It was called The Real Mill Revolution. Um, they were highlighted, I think, in that movie and at one point. And he didn't get accepted to this coaching program. It was a coaching training program because they weren't ready in South Africa to take international students. And he was devastated. And I was devastated for him. And I, I think I actually wrote to them. I said, you guys have, will never have, well, not never, but you will, <laughs> you will have the most passionate, um, empathetic, caring person who really wants to help people behind your program if you can rethink your um willingness to accept Doug into your program so hold on I want to because so many amazing people who go on to do so many amazing things face like this hardship and it's like look at this it's like you who's you know advocating for him and him who's still struggling so he gets a big fat rejection letter big fat rejection letter he's like why I can't believe I can't do this I really want to do this and I'm like I can tell how much you want to do this and in the same email, I said, well, maybe we'll do something on our own if you're not going to bring us into your organization. And maybe we'll invite all the experts to our town. And it was almost like I put it into the universe because Doug forgot that I ever even, I don't think, I don't know if I copied him or not. I told him that I wrote this and I think he kind of forgot that I even put this in the universe at that time. That was probably in uh, November, December of 2015. He always tells a story, probably November, December of 2015. And Doug always tells a story in January of 2016. It was his birthday. And we were with our work friends. We've been talking about low carb and what we're eating for six months now. Um, 
And no, no, everybody still that we worked with kind of thought it was crazy that we were eating chicken wings and not drinking beer <laughs> and um, not getting the pizza. And they all left. It was a birth. It was they, we had gathered after a one day training and we were um, having dinner with for Doug's birthday and they all left. And he was saying, you know, more people need to understand the why behind this and the research behind this. And but we need to get like a thousand people in the room and he's banging, he always says he's banging his fist. We need to get a thousand people in the room and plan something where we get the expert speakers together and bring more awareness and teach. And I said, yeah, we should maybe think about doing that. Maybe we should still think about doing that. The next morning I woke up and he literally had written to people already. And I was like, oh, <laughs> Yeah, you really oh. thought about doing it. You just took action and did it, oh, right? He just took action. And that's Doug Reynolds in a nutshell, Brian. You've come to know that. And um, yeah, he wrote letters to Gary Taubes. He goes, Oh, yeah, I'll come. Uh, and it's just amazing how, you know, that's what I've noticed in the community. There's so many people like that. That, you know, when I was a newbie to this, so many people just said, Hey, you know, Ivor Cummins, I, you know, appreciate him and, and uh, Jason Fung and so many people that were just so nice, not saying, okay, I came up with this and I'm keeping it to myself. I'm not telling you because I don't want anyone else to compete. They were saying, Hey, the more people we can help, the better. Let's all share. Let's share our knowledge, our skill sets, because there's certain people this podcast may reach that other people, you know, may not reach, or they're not going to like this podcast and they want to go somewhere else and learn. So, oh, great. The more podcasts that are talking about it, great. Go out and do it. Or the more, um, uh, committees or companies that are, are focused on this and that's why you brought a lot like what you sparked was for a lot of people to go out and, and share the knowledge with other people and the people we met that first year sparked us to say gosh there's even more to this you know meeting a young lady who had been in a severe car accident was dealing with chronic pain but also um, a syndrome that was came out of uh, her crush injuries to her legs it affected her nervous system um, and she was putting on even more weight. She was getting really depressed and she found the ketogenic diet because she knew there was some nervous system um, problems. The syndrome was affecting her nervous system. And when she, she remembered that she'd done some studying nutrition, she knew that there was some work out there about the ketogenic diet helping with epilepsy, which is in, in nervous system. So she says, maybe I'll try this. It helped her tremendously. That's Keto Carol. She's still on the, um, doing some work with coaching clients and stuff. But she, like people just telling us those stories really reminded us again that this isn't just about weight loss. This isn't a diet, a fad diet. This is something with really serious medical therapeutic benefits that can help people. So every time we learned that the, there were more and more things like Brian, you say, when you came in, to the 2017 conference, when you got together with other people, other doctors, other, more of your peers, and all, more of the people doing the presentations, that there was more to this than a weight loss fad diet, that it was something that could help people with anxiety and depression, TBI, like we just talked about on Alzheimer's, but also women, fertility and PCOS and menopausal symptoms, like, you know, didn't help me as much, but a lot of people get rid of their um, hot flashes and balance their hormones for men as well. Um, we had, remember the man, Brian, when you came to us, let me start, let me go back. And um, Brian came to us after the 2017 conference and he said, I was amazed that I learned all these things that happen, um, that can happen with the diet that weren't just about weight loss and, and seeing all the science presented and meeting the people who are doing it. And you came to us and you said, I want to do more in the community. And um, not only had you gone back and started telling your patients about this and got 11 people off insulin in the first three months, and then you say they got themselves off of it because they made the changes. We were amazed. Then you said, I really want to do something in the community. What if I tried to do a seminar? And you contacted your priest and you said, would you ask the parishioners if I was to do something, would they come? And they all said yes, right? That's crazy. We have Brett Scher there, like, you know, you know, he's he's done a few things. And yeah, it's just amazing. Jeff Cotterman now, who's doing all the, you know, Ben's workout and all that. He wasn't doing it back then. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's pretty amazing how over time, you know, you just build a community and say, let's help people. And then good comes out of it. 
you yeah. know, we've kind of done that in San Diego and we've done that in different places where people can, you know, it's amazing. I mean, you know, true. We've had experiences. You're somewhere in another country and someone's touched by the podcast that we've never met before. And you hear their story and you go, wow, this is like unbelievable. You know, it's crazy. Um, how much of an impact we can make. It really is. And I remember when you did that first seminar, Brian, Doug and I were in the back, like proud parents. Like, honestly, we were like, look at what Brian's doing. Like he first came to low carb USA conference in 2017. Wasn't really sure about telling other people. And now he's got, what was it? 200, 300, 400 people who came on the Sunday and Monday night, Sunday day. And that's pretty night. crazy. We had to have, we had to split it up because it was too crowded and we had to do it like two nights in a row. And I'm like, great. I'm going to be doing this thing, but it was, it's really cool to see the fruit that came of that of people's lives getting improved and coming off meds and all those things. No, you know, that's this... what I was thinking of. Um, when I was talking about men's health and hormones being balanced, it reminded me of that. Cause we, after the six weeks, there was a testimonial night it was incredible. One of the women stood up and she said, thank you for making my husband a nicer person. And we all laughed, but she said, no, seriously, mm -hmm. he, not only always where his hormones kind of balancing out his blood sugar balancing out his mood balancing out he was getting home from work and he had energy to hang out with the family and his wife he wasn't crabby and like lost of energy having a headache couldn't do anything was exhausted he all of a sudden had like energy and his mood was better it was amazing yeah when you see that that's undeniable that's what i see every day when i come in i love it. as a matter of fact just yesterday <laughs> two missionaries came in a year ago and they go, can we follow up with you doc? And, and they've been in Africa. They've been all over the world and she was diabetic out of control and, and not, her sugars are, and, and you know, the funny thing is all their lives got better. Everything's fantastic this year. And he goes, look, his testosterone tripled. He goes, and he said, my wife doesn't mind that part of it either. You know, talking about their sex drive and energy. And like, you can see there's a different connection than they had a year ago. Right. Because they were just fatigued, tired, depressed, like, going through the motions and now they're fired up and excited talking about all the stuff they're going to do and the travels. And it's like, wow, that's cool that we can have that kind of impact on people, you know, and not even, I haven't talked to them in a year, but they got it and they moved on and they did what they had to do, you know? Yeah. That's pretty. Throw so university stuff like that. Right. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, look, personal experience. We've seen a lot, let me tell you. And, and this is, you know, this is what uh, I was thinking about, uh, you know, upcoming conference in, um, you know, in uh, Denver and, you know, uh, sorry, in uh, um, Boca Raton. Boca. Yeah, in Boca Raton. And the, the focus on food addiction and mental health, I mean, that in and of itself is, is such a huge, you know, forget about all the hormonal effects like testosterone, forget about the effects on traumatic brain injury, seizures, right? Forget about the effects on alcohol withdrawal, Forget about the effects on weight loss, diabetes, right? Forget about the effects on testosterone, right? Just the effects on mental health, you know, is like, uh, is huge. huge. Right? And, and this, is, this is the exciting part of getting people together, like you and Doug have done, is, you know, you get people to start talking. Like me and Brian started talking four years ago. Hey, are you seeing testosterone drives in young men? Yeah, I'm seeing that too. You know, like, hey, wait a second. You know, I had a guy with a gambling problem saying his gambling problem is gone. You know? Yeah, look at the triglycerides, look problem. at the HDL, look at this. And we go, wow, are you seeing this too? And that's what's so great about this yeah, course. Right. Yeah, so so the thing is, is like, you know, I remember back, you know, four or five years ago and, and you know, we're getting together, we're talking about these things. And, you know, uh, I had somebody, um, uh, you know, just who said, it, you know, quote unquote, I'm a porn addict. I've got right. Another person who said, you know, I, I don't want to drink alcohol, you know? And so, and, and since then we've seen this play into the literature so much, but it was like bringing docs together, right? That's like the key part here. And, you know, Brian came and found me in a gutter and he pulled me out and he put me on a, you know, we, we did this podcast, but that's exactly what you guys have done. You know, you guys have found doctors, put them together, put them on a stage, you know, and and how, uh, you know, low carb, low carb USA was just a start, you know, and people don't know, you know, and we, we have to bring the word out on the Society of Metabolic Health Practitioners, right, and how we're getting docs together now. Um, so that, uh, 
you know, we can all rely on each other, you know, and network. And that that's that's the huge stuff where it takes people and manpower. And that's you and Doug. You know, that's you guys, right? Like there was nobody like who was doing this? You know, that's in crazy. Place, that's right? Crazy. Like, isn't it crazy that you're the you guys were the mother and the father, really, essentially, you know, maybe we shouldn't put it that way. But, you know, of creating a and if it wasn't for Doug knowing Tim Noakes, and if it wasn't for, you know, Brian coming to the like, you guys have really been at the epicenter of this. And I'm just, you know, I'm, I, I want to hear more about it. So I, I'm just curious. So your comment is you're losing my, like, but what is what is the drive to keep going? You know, what's the you know, what's keeping you? There's got to be something keeping you in this, right? Oh, yeah. There's a lot of things. We've, we just talked about the personal experience that people have had. But when we realize how much of an impact physicians like yourselves can make um, in your own personal lives and for the lives of your patients, that really drove us. And we really started to focus on making sure that CMEs were available for the conferences. We had um, had the help of Jeff Gerber, who does the Denver conference um, with help us with the first one to make sure we had CMEs. We knew that we wanted to have those. We knew that we wanted to invite the healthcare professionals. We didn't realize how important it was going to become to us and our work and our passion of helping more people that way, because you guys go on to help thousands of people. And you started this podcast and you talked to millions of people, which I can't believe. I don't know how many people are listening to us today, but um, it's kind of crazy. Um, but when we meet you, Tro and Brian, and we hear your story, and then we go on to meet Andro Swari, who says, I used to teach diabetes classes, and then I myself ended up getting diabetes, and his mind was boggled. He's like, how is it that I'm supposed to be a leader and representative in this community, and I'm getting when I'm teaching people about how to treat? This doesn't make sense. So he wrote to us. He um, when we have people tell us that story, it just, we can't, we know we can't stop. So um, the first conference that we had in 2016, the per people said, when's the next one? And we said, we have no idea. We just started this one. Doug, literally, I, I didn't tell the part where he said, now, have you called the hotel and booked the hotel? I'm like, no, that's a contract. Do you have any idea what that contract is? He said, call the Marriott, big Marriott downtown San Diego. He said, call the Omni and something else. I was like, do you have any idea? It was like $150,000 contract. And I'm like, no, I didn't, I didn't get that contract. That's insane. Um, then we booked a Westin downtown and all these people came and we didn't get as many people as we hoped for and needed to pay for the conference. So I got a bill from the conference people about the speaker rooms and it was $11,000 and my jaw dropped. And I was like, oh my gosh, um, we're still trying, you know, we're paying for the dinner and we're paying for the lecture hall. And then I'm like, geez, we have this huge bill for the rooms now. And people said, when's the next one? We will pay you now if you will start planning next year. If it's anything like this one is. And we were like, okay, Doug stayed up all night, made a web page and landing page got the dates from the hotel for the year later and started and people bought tickets. They had no idea who was going to speak, what the topics were going to be. They all bought tickets again. We put them at like 40% off. So every year we do this and it pays for the previous event <laughs> or the event that's still ending. Just yeah, not, and not only that, just talking about the low card people, like the the people who own the hotel were like, these are the nicest crowd. Everyone's friendly and nice. No one's complaining. They just go with the flow and clean up their messes afterwards. And so they were really glad to have the low car people come back again. Certainly were people. It's amazing when the Marriott in Florida said that to us, all of the staff, everybody behind the scenes has said, this has been the nicest group we've ever had. And we have but groups every day. There in, in yeah, their they, they didn't know who I was. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't show up yet. Right? Tro hadn't come yet to say, I don't have a blanket and a pillow. No, that was me. I, I didn't have anything. Tro helped me out. I had no Brian bed, didn't have his no room nothing. booked. I had to snuggle with this guy, man. Are you kidding me? I was, it was. A... <laughs> oh man, we won't make that mistake again. Brian, hopefully you're coming out because um, I know our speaker lineup. Tro put such a giant effort into getting this uh, addiction day on Friday. 
so chocker block full and then we had a couple you know a number of people lined up for the saturday and sunday we ran out of room we we're like brian you don't have one on the schedule we hope you're okay with that and he's like yeah i'm good and i heard a rumor that you might maybe think about coming out still yeah i may try to sneak out we'll see i got a lot of stuff going on tro's keeping me busy over here it's hard but yeah it's I awesome just throw that out there I know I'm, I would love to, I would really love to, you know, we have so many great people going to be there and stuff. So, you know, well, we have a place for you if you come, but, um, all right. You heard so, it, Tro. All right. She has a, and not with Tro though, again, right? Yeah. I mean, unless you're, I gotta <laughs> make Rosette sure coming? Cause Rosette's coming now. So, oh, shoot, know, man. you know, you, you know, I gotta, I don't know if you can, you can take, she'll be couch. okay. Sleeping on the couch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's pretty tough. Maybe you find a roommate because the, the hotel rooms are selling quickly. Um, tickets are selling briskly. It's yeah, pretty that's exciting. awesome. That's awesome news. Tell tell to people a little bit about the conference. I know we already did one with Doug, but you know what are you what are you excited about seeing at the conference, and who are you excited about hearing from? Yeah, I'm really excited about this um, addiction component tro that you've helped um, put together. Um, such a big effort from you to make sure that. Um, this is a dress. It's really important. I think I mentioned something in one of the blog posts that we wrote about it. How can we not talk about changing lifestyle and not address the elephant in the room? Um, culturally, food environments are toxic. They're just, you know, you go into the break room and any office um, setting and it's just junk. Um, when I worked at a hospital, I know it's it bagels and cupcakes and cakes and junk. You're like, and I would do this. When I worked in the doctor's office, I used to get so mad if I came in and the and the physical therapy reps came in and left bags of donuts. I was like, you have to tell them not to leave these because I, I can't not eat these dang donut holes. <laughs> So, I mean, literally tell them, no, we don't want them. They can leave their pads and their pens and talk about a, coming for doing a lunch and I want salad and and um, I don't want these donuts. You know, we have to address the food environment. We have to give people tools and resources to share with their patients and clients that will help them be able to do like we're doing, to say, no, thank you. Um, I understand you're trying to be kind. I understand like grandma's trying to spread love. And I understand that since we were two years old, we celebrated our yearly birthdays with big giant cake, but there are other ways to do this. So we can celebrate our life. We can celebrate our relationships. We can go for outings together. We don't have to have a cake. I know we had my mom's birthday a few years ago and none of my family's low carb. We've been trying to get them to be for many years, but, and my sister said, you were supposed to get the cake. I said, I am not going to Baskin Robbins and buying an ice cream cake. I don't care what birthday this is for my mom. I'm not doing it. You can't have a birthday without a cake. I said, you can. <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. And right now, this time of year, uh, we, I just did a Zoom meeting with my patients and the amount of peer pressure people receive at Thanksgiving when they're trying to be on track and and it's it's universal. It's an amazing thing where, you know, it's the same you know, it's always like, cause I know Tro gets into it with people regarding like moderation. It's like telling an alcoholic, yeah, here, here's a case of beer, just moderate it. Have one. And we'll let you be by yourself and just have one and go ahead and moderate it. Good luck. Yeah, right. And it's, it's, it's amazing. Well, so, so the, the, the thing is, is, you know, lifestyle has a nutritional component and has a behavioral component. And that behavioral component can be very much you know, psychological, it could be, you know, cultural, it could be. And so how do you find the people who have more to unpack than just lowering your carbs? Yeah. If page four worked for everybody, if Atkins plan worked for everybody, me and Brian would be out of business, yeah. right? Nobody would right. come to us. Diabetes would be resolved, right? I mean, it would be like, you know, just here you go. Here's a diabetes resolution plan. It's easy to do, go follow it. And sometimes it's complicated. And so having the, you know, the brightest minds come and talk about that, um, you know, it, it, it's awesome. And so, you know, and the other thing is, is, you know, a, a big part of this, and not ma many people may know is, you know, Amy Igus, our, our, you know, program director, she's a health coach. She's the one who pushed, she's like, you guys talking about, you know, is SMHP and are we going to be talking about food addiction yet? Are we going to be talking about food addiction yet? And you know, Doug, the minute he heard it, he's like, you know what, Rob said the same exact thing, you know, and one thing led to another. Um, and I'm just, I'm excited. It's going to be, 
it's going to be, I don't know, he, the last he told me, he said there were about 50 signups just for the workshop. Yeah, and it was supposed to be like a bonus, whoever can come and get there early. He ended up putting it into whenever anybody registers, they get a confirmation email back and it says if you can make the Thursday RSVP here. And every single person who signed up since he did that has said they're coming on the Thursday as well. Yeah. So, so yeah, there's the 50 people. Is, yeah, I mean, the big thing with that is, and, and sorry, you know, here I am yapping again, can we help other doctors, coaches, trainers, just get some basic tools to mm -hmm. deal with things a little bit more than nutrition? You know, like, yeah. hey, we, we, we're going we're gonna to have two awesome days with Unwin talking about nutrition. And, you know, we're going to have so many people talking about, you know, I know uh, uh, we have some Mark Kukuzela and Ben Bickman and all these people talking about science. And then we got a day to kind of focus on that relationship to food. So I'm, I'm stoked, you know, and this hasn't been done. You know, the last time food addiction was in a conference in the United States, you know, was over 15 years ago, it was about 15 years ago. Isn't that crazy? No, it's insane. I think when we first started having Joan Eflin speak and talking about processed food industries using the model that tobacco used to get people hooked on food i was like wait a minute wait what like i don't know anything about advertising and marketing i mean i know i've seen it since i was a kid you can't just eat just one how many licks does it get to get to the middle you know all did, these things yeah. that we've all learned but the psychology and the behavioral the behavioral psychology that they've used to make it seem like this is mainstream and that this is culturally okay is pretty insane actually and i think the only one that went away was finger looking good you can't say that anymore <laughs> because of covid that messed up that whole marketing scheme but other than that everything else is true right you can't eat just one they tell you you can't eat just one and they kind of know you know no you they, might be I, able to figure I used it out to eat smart food thinking i was eating really good healthy popcorn i know i could never not finish that bag i was always like oh my god i just ate the whole bag and i was like oh that was supposed to be a snack and now, <laughs> now I can't eat anything else, but to go back. So um, the people that you put together for that day that are new to me, that I'm really excited about meeting are Vera Tarman and James Greenblatt. I just posted yesterday about James. Um, he looks like he did his training close to you in New York, um, Tro, and then he's based in Boston. He's a clinical professor at Tufts University um, and um, doing some work um, with behavioral health and, and um, Dedham, Massachusetts, and Deaconess Hospital. Um, he, um, Vera Tarman, I'm excited to learn from about addiction and bo both of the unwins finally coming from the UK. Um, we were supposed to see them in Florida a couple of years ago and then COVID hit and we had them all virtually, but not in person. Same with Ben Bickman. We had him on virtually. He wasn't able to attend in person because we weren't doing live events. Um, I met um, Michael Hoffman. I first came across on the Nutrition Network's um, course. He's a neurologist. He's also from South Africa. He'd be talking about um, lifestyle, ketogenic diet, low carb, fuel for the brain and the nervous system. I'm really excited to hear about him from him. Michael Eads was one of the, was the very first speaker at our very first conference in 2016, back in the very first one. This is, I can't remember now. I think this is our 18th, 19th conference. And he's finally coming back to speak. Um, I'm really excited. I was really nice to see him. Rod Taylor, low carb down under, um, which I'm sorry to say, he's not gonna be able to make it up this year, but he was, Really in, influential. Are they allowed to leave? I don't. They, didn't they like lock down Australia? Are they allowed to leave yet? Or they? Mm -hmm. He came from in San Diego this summer. Oh, he was there. Okay, so yes, like, you're allowed to leave from Australia. Yeah. But, okay, they must. So have he opened. went. Him and Steve Finney, Finney are good friends. They he went um, met Steve Finney in the Bay Area, and they drove down together. Um, and then he invited the Eads to come and attend, which was great to see them. We didn't have a chance to get them on the speaker lineup, but it was super nice to see Michael Mary Dan again, connect with them, and then invite him to speak now in Florida. Um, I haven't seen the title of his talk. I should pull up the schedule and see. Normally he talks about the anthropology um, of nu nutrition and um, what humans ate, you know, as we were evolving, which reminds me of 
something that I find so important. And um, speaking of documentaries, there's a cancer documentary coming out. We're going to highlight it at the beginning of uh, and Doug's opening talks. We've been in conversation. We just released it too here. We just released We just it. had them on. Brad, Amazing. Uh, oh, I was going to say you should awesome. have them if you had. Perfect. Yeah, Brad they're Maggie. so awesome. And I saw part of their first episode. Let me tell you, it takes a lot to move me. But I was like, holy crap, you know, with Miriam, you know, Miriam Kalamian, she's also part of the uh, uh, SMHP, she's on the board of the directors, she was interviewed for that, and Thomas Seafried, I mean, it was, and and the closing scene in that, uh, in that, uh, you know, documentary, it, it literally brought me to tears, and, and uh, you know, my wife was sitting there watching, we're both sitting in, and the minute I remember, I called Brian, I was like, Brian, we know exactly who we're bringing on the podcast, I'm so happy to hear that we're going to be you know, uh, you know, featuring that at uh, at low carb, uh, low carb USA and or SMHP in uh, in uh, in Boca. Yeah, they'll 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 have a brief uh, five minute um, invitation because Doug and I with low carb USA are going to do a virtual event to view that first episode. It was going to be a feature length documentary, and then somehow over the last few six months or so, it changed into a five part series. So the first part. And what I think I really want to talk about when I was looking at Mike Eads and Nina Teichels and Gary Taubes, they all are looking at the history of nutrition recommendations. Now, people can't understand where we are and how we've got here if we have if we don't go back. So um, Maggie and Brad partnered with Sam Appel. Um, I can't remember the name of his book, but he's highlighting Otto Warburg, Otto Warburg and the Warburg effect and his research into cancer cancer research and, and what led into cancer therapies and his research was ultimately ignored and it when it went into gene therapy and immunotherapy for cancer and Miriam Kalamian I don't know if you saw the clip where she says it's helping people treat cancer or reduce outcomes by two percent of cancer growth but it's say it's say it's giving people two months or something like that more that is not a successful treatment. If any one of us is hearing those, those statistics, that's not a treatment. Um, if you go back and you look in the 1940s through World War II, Otto Warburg is doing research. It gets squashed because of this and because of this other person doing this other research. And Gary Taubes is the same thing when he talks about, he did it in two different talks over the years with diabetes and diabetes research and diabetes treatment recommendations and therapeutic um, recommendations and for weight loss and obesity. When you go back and you look in the late 1800s and the early 1900s, who was doing the research and what were they saying? And what was this group over here saying what we're talking about now, reducing carbohydrates and adding fats and concentrating on protein. And those people got squashed for some reason. Um, heart disease started becoming about meat and fat and not about the sugar. Um, who was it? Robert Lustig and a few of the people working at UCSF found those documents that were squashed about sugar and carbohydrates being more of an influence on uh, um, cardiovascular disease than fat and meat. But where did that research go? Yeah, Yunkin losing out, being a nice guy, you know, all those kind of things, you know. It's fascinating. So if we don't go back and look at the history of the research and the recommendations and why and how we got here, we're not going to be able to make those changes. I think it's really powerful for people to see that timeline that like they did do in that first episode that's going to be released. We're going to do a live virtual event the midweek in February. Everybody can see that. We'll be posting links. Um, and then we'll do a Q and A. But when you can see that timeline, like Gary Taubes lays out in um, his books, um, and once he's writing about diabetes, and Nina writes in the Big Fat Surprise, the timeline of where we were and how we got here, I think it really clicks with people to say because they think it's always been low fat recommendations. Of course, you have to eat low fat for good heart health. Of course, you have to eat healthy whole grains to keep your cholesterol down. Well, who ever invented that? Like, <laughs> never understand. Was, is, was the Cheerios actually absorbing the cholesterol in my bloodstream to lower my cholesterol? Like, I. Well, oh, that's what people thought. Yeah, that's what people thought. And I think that's, 
that's a huge thing. And that's that that kind of brings us, you know, Pam, I think a good way to close this is, you know, Shelly Miller, who's who's one of our Patreon supporters who's here, she said when her her comment was she said that I'm looking forward to meeting people so that the people that have given me a new lease on life, <clears throat> I will be starstruck to say the least. Pam, thank you for all your hard work to make these events happen. And I think that's that's pretty awesome. That's true. I mean, your hard work behind the scenes and you impact life and, and, and you give people a new lease on life, you know, allow them to think differently and say, well, what if, you know, what if I listened to Dr. Unwin and, and what he has to say and, you know, look at stress and life and all that. So, yeah. So we, you know, I want to thank you too, for the impact you've had on me and I know on Tro and, you know, all that you're doing behind the scenes, it, it really is pretty amazing. Thank you guys. Um, and Tro, thanks for your influence on us to for bringing people together with the Society of Metabolic Health Practitioners. That was, you know, starting the nonprofit. That was a little bit of a COVID baby for us. And Doug, it took literally nine months from March, 2020 to launching in December, 2020. And there are literally over, there's a few thousand people on that list. If anybody's looking for a healthcare practitioner around the world, this is an international organization to help them in their um, journey if they can't get with Tro or Dr. Brian um, because they're not in the correct states or country for them to support them, like do telemedicine or there's a list there. Um, the educational piece and the peer group piece of being able to ask questions and say, I'm not sure about this aspect of my patient care and my practice. I want to ask my peer. It's there behind the scenes. We have over Tro, there's almost 450 members now. Crazy, crazy. Um, and yeah. there's almost, there's over crazy. 60 accredited metabolic health practitioners in the, it hasn't even been two years. Um, can, I, can I just tell you, can I, can I close off with one thing? Can I close off one thing? Okay. Uh, the vegan, the, the, v, the ACLM, I should say the vegan lobby of, of, uh, of uh, doctors who are interested in lifestyle Right, the vegan lobby just got a forty million dollar contract from the city of New York City. Right, so so for the last thirty years, right, they have organized, right, politically and as an organization medically, they have organized so well, and uh, this is exactly what's needed for us, right? What you've done, Low Carb USA. That's that's the starting point, right? You built off of Noakes, and you built off of, uh, you know, Eric Westman, um, uh, Eric and... Westman, and and now Eric Westman is on the board of directors for the SMHP. Mark Cucuzella, who you know took his entire, um, you know, uh, uh, institution, and we won't get into what's happened recently, but he converted it to a low sugar institution, right? So these are the people. We're getting them together because that's and Rob Sivis, so many people, Lori Buchanan, and others, you know, so many people, Brian, that are part of this, Tony Hampton. I can't even name all the people, mm -hmm. but we have to start working together because it, otherwise there's nobody doing this, right? And without you guys, there's nobody. Without Brian being, you know, his community leader, his, you know, being an advocate and a, and a community, right? Without me, without, and now we have to start to work together because we need that $40 million contract, right? And that's the truth, right? We need that $40 million contract, right? There's no, we do. I know good that we can do, you know, Brian, finally, you and me could be paid for doing this Bozo podcast, you know? You mean people get paid for doing this work? What are you yeah, talking about? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. We can finally pay Pam, you know, Pam for, uh, and, and Doug for, for putting on these conferences, right? You know, um, and so we we need it right and and i'm so honored to call both of you guys friends and and allies and colleagues and just thank you for coming on and you know talking with us about what you do uh just want to just want to say back and i know brian feels the same way we're so happy to have met you and work with you and work together with you uh and uh thank you for everything you do Thanks. Our lives have been greatly enriched by this entire community. And I think it's a lot of people who just really want to make a difference. So we have to lift each other up and we have to work together because, yeah, Belinda Fecky has said how much um, effort has gone into the state of California um, into medical curriculums and clinics and 
making sure that there's vegan protocols and recommendations. Let's continue to do the work to therapeutically reduce carbohydrates. And anybody who can attend the symposium on metabolic health coming up in January, see Dr. Tro's work, um, see his presentation. We've got a few new, uh, new other people presenting. Low carb MD, you can use that code to get 20% off of your registration. You can watch it from your home or office live that weekend. You can watch the recordings for an unlimited time after. You can come to Boca Raton and see us in person and meet a bunch of people who will keep you energized and going into the future where, where we can help other people. Appreciate you guys. Thanks so much. Awesome. Thank yeah, you for joining us. Brian, did you know we had a coupon code or code? I didn't even know we had a code, you know? Mm -hmm. But apparently we have a code. <laughs> yeah, do. just tell people who want to sign up. Like we'll put it in the show notes, but what's the website and what's the code again? So lowcarbusa.org is going to have all the links to the Boca Raton event in Florida. The code is lowcarbmd, all one word, to save 20%. If you need a CME credit opt-in, that also goes towards um, the 20% will come off of that. Um, the um, live in-person event um includes a dinner so you don't even have to get a discount on the dinner friday saturday night has a low carb all low carb buffet dinner um do they know i'm coming because they, they i'll shut them down you know so brian that's seen, the one thing about a buffet you have to be careful <laughs> not to eat the entire thing yeah when we talk um, about food <laughs> Oh geez, and I, I have to be careful, be mindful of uh, the jokes I was about to make. Okay, so so as a as a former food addict, as a current food addict in remission, I will be on my best behavior, and I will as well. And if anybody wants to go to the smhp.org to look up anything on there, it's also there. Clinical guidelines. We didn't even get a chance to cover that. We could talk for hours, so we'll have to do this again sometime, guys. <laughs> Awesome. It's a date. All right. We'll do it. Guys, thank you, Patreon supporters, and everybody who supported this podcast. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Brian.